So I've had the box for a little over a month now and a lot of people have been hitting me up on Twitter and on stream just asking me questions about the box. So I thought I would take advantage of that and make a video to discuss what the learning process has been like and hopefully help some of you guys make the switch over to box. So when I first switched over to box, I was seriously doubting myself. Okay, honestly, I think I'm just gonna return this shit. <laughs> this shit's way too hard, bro. I think just having it in my hands, it was super intimidating. You know, it's this kind of big contraption and it has a lot of buttons. And overall, I just like felt really frustrated for the first few days. A is down here. Who made this thing? I think whenever you start something fresh like that, it can be overwhelming. Especially for me, I was really annoyed at how much I had to readapt my muscle memory. And overall, I just felt really clumsy anytime I was trying to do any inputs. So I am starting to finally feel comfortable on box, but admittingly, like I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So hopefully you guys can learn from my error and not do the same thing on your journey. So if you're gonna transition from controller to box, tip number one, is to read the manual. I know this is gonna sound really obvious to a lot of you guys, but being dead ass with you, I did not read the manual. I'm really motivated and really disciplined when it comes to grinding things out. That kind of stuff really fulfills me. I think I'm just a hands-on learner, but I have always been really bad about like reading and studying. I mean, I dropped out of college, so like, <laughs> I don't know what you expect, or I don't know what I expect. But that being said, I missed out on a lot of really important information by not reading the manual. The box has a lot of really nuanced details and a lot of specific things that really matter, but you're not gonna fully understand it unless you read the manual. I was in a lucky enough position where, you know, I was streaming so I could ask people on chat or I was hitting people up and they would answer me specifically and explain things. So I kind of used my top player privilege to my advantage, but that's not gonna be everyone's situation. Like not everybody's gonna be able to just DM hacks and ask them questions. I probably should stop doing that. It's probably fucking annoying. So as an example, I actually spent the first entire day out canceling incorrectly. Uh, I didn't know I had to use D to L cancel, I was using L. And then for the first like two or three weeks, I was actually ledge dashing wrong. So instead of me just starting out by reading and doing everything correctly, I actually had to spend hours and hours relearning everything just because I was lazy. Read the manual, it's not gonna take that long. <laughs> I'll be a hundred with you guys, I, uh, I, I still haven't read it. Hey, do as I say, not as I do. I promise you it'll be worth it. Tip number two is have a graphic of the button map opened up when you're practicing. I know it might sound super simple and super rudimentary, but seriously, this helped me out so much. It was dope to just be able to go into practice mode, get lost on the controller, look at this graphic and just see, okay, this is where my A button is. This is where the C stick is. This is where grab is, right? It was just really nice to have a reference point so I wouldn't get lost on the controller and just spend time trying to figure it out on my own. I know each and every one of you thinks you're gonna be the fucking Da Vinci of Fox and you might, but you're gonna get lost for a while on the controller and that's totally okay. Tip number three is B patience. You are learning something completely new. It's going to take a lot of time to get used to it. A GameCube controller has like seven buttons or so. A box has 20. Like it's a lot of information to take and it's going to take time to do that. So be patient and success will come to you. Tip number four is grinding things out step by step. Whenever you're learning something new, it's super important for you to learn how to do it right the first time. When it comes to tech skill, the best way to do that is gonna be by breaking things down step by step. As an example, day one, when I first had the box, I literally spent hours learning how to short hop. Once I can short hop, then I could add in an aerial. And once I can aerial, then I can add in an L cancel. Breaking things down step by step really made it so I was learning effectively and I was learning things correctly the first time. Take your time to practice each individual input Input and get them smooth, get them like butter, you know? You wanna make sure that you're doing the right thing in practice mode, so eventually you can start applying that to actual matches. Tip number five is solo practice instead of playing opponents. I think it's a combination of laziness and ego, but for whatever reason, the first thing I wanted to do when I got the box was I wanted to play against people. Just dead ass, I just wanted to hop into unranked, fuck some people up. I thought I was gonna be hack some money immediately, I'm not. So thankfully I stopped myself and instead of playing against opponents, I went into practice mode and just started grinding my ass off there. Spending time playing by yourself and in solo practice is really just gonna build up that foundation. And overall, it's just gonna be way better use of your time instead of grinding against an opponent when you don't even know what you're doing. If you wanted a specific way to split up your time, I'd say in the first few weeks at least, put something like 80, 85% of your overall melee time, specifically into solo practice. You know, the last 10, 15%, you can play against people if you want, you know, keep your own sanity. But seriously, try to work on that solo tech skill and just grinding things out on your own because it's really gonna be important long-term. And speaking of solo practice, that takes us right into tip number six, which is get Uncle Punch. Seriously, it's 2021, and if you don't know what Uncle Punch is, you are missing out. 
you are not practicing effectively, you need to get Uncle Punch. Uncle Punch is the fucking future of Melee. It has a bunch of like mini game slash drill type things built into it that just help you grind important tech out. Like as an example, it has a ledge dash drill. It has like an L cancel or fast fall one, uh, shield drop practice out of shield practice. It just has all sorts of really important shit that you're gonna need to master to get good at the game. There's a link in the description to get to Uncle Punch's Patreon. Seriously, I'm not paid to say this, like just do yourself a favor and get it. Like it is 100% worth it. I'm running out of fingers. Tip number seven is watch other box players play. Seeing how other players did specific things or inputs really helped me internalize what I should be doing with my hands. And also in a way it gave me confidence to know that I was doing the right thing when I was doing inputs and doing my tech skill stuff. At times I felt kind of worried and lost that I was doing the wrong thing, but watching other players really helped me feel good and made me know that I was doing the right thing. So I'm sure there are dozens of box streamers, uh, but I'm just gonna name the ones that I watched when I was coming up, you know? On Twitch, I watched Night SSBM and I watched Gallon the Wise. I have both of the links in the description. And of course, I have to show myself. I like to think I'm becoming a pretty decent resource for box information. You already know I got the hand cam on deck. Lately, the streams have actually been popping off. So I appreciate all the love. Come tune in, come hang out. If you guys have questions, I'd love to answer them there. Hit me up. And my final tip for you guys, number eight, is join the box discord seriously joining the box discord has been amazing like it's been a super sick resource uh, i didn't find out about it actually until a couple weeks ago but i wish i knew about it day one because everybody there has been super supportive super dope to talk to and just overall super helpful and it's not just me people are nice too like I'll seriously see the stupidest fucking questions and people will just genuinely answer. And it's so dope and I love it because I don't have the patience for that shit, but people do. Like, I honestly think it's really cool. It's like a subculture of Melee. Like we're all people with fucked up hands who care about ergonomics and we all care about each other improving. It's just a tight knit community of a bunch of weirdos who play on a rectangle controller. So seriously, if you're getting a box or a box style controller or you're thinking about it, join the Discord, ask whatever questions you have and people are more than happy to answer. Cool, so that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any additional questions, hit me up in the YouTube comments. I've been doing a pretty good job about responding lately. So if you have anything specific, feel free to hit me up there. Otherwise, you know where to find me. Much love, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.